Hi everybody, I'm Margot True. I'm the food editor here at Sunset Magazine in Oakland, California. And today I'm in the kitchen with Avery Ruzica, who is the co-founder and head baker of Manresa Bread in Los Gatos and Los Altos and a few different farmers markets, which she'll tell you about later. And her breads and pastries have inspired a cult following. And I can say that because I'm one of the <laughs> one of the acolytes and I just have to show you for a second what she does I mean look look people look upon the bread the wonder this is handmade in small batches fermented for what 36 hours yeah, some yes of it? yes absolutely oh, uh, 24 36 hours yeah, unbelievable cold fermentation. yeah six different breads every day and 12 pastries okay so Avery what are you gonna make today today we're gonna make our whole wheat uh, chocolate chip walnut cookies um, and they're made with fresh milled whole wheat flour oh, yeah so, so good. really yummy so you guys before we get started please ask Avery questions if you have them because she truly is one of the finest bakers in the country and this is a really rare chance to talk to her directly and Kendra off camera will read them aloud and You'll answer, Absolutely, right? I'd love to, yeah. Okay, and also, if, you're, if you have friends who are interested in baking or who are big fans of Manresa bread, share the link as soon as you see it, and that'll uh, help them participate too. Thanks. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, so these are one of the cookies are, that we've been making since the very beginning. Uh, this cookie for us was really exciting because it incorporates something that's really important to us, which is fresh milled flour. Uh, mm. We really... We really started baking because we were excited about learning about a really great product. And so the cookie, which seems like a, such a simple product, um, incorporating like the highest quality ingredients makes all the difference. Uh, yeah. So yeah. with something so simple, it, you know, and I know that you went through various iterations of this. Absolutely, cookie. absolutely. So when we first started making it, we were buying our own. Uh, we were buying flour, and now we are making our own flour. So we we sift our own whole wheat flour. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more about flours. Um, but if we want to get started with making the cookie, yes, um, please. We'll go quickly through the ingredients. Uh, so we're using um, butter. It should be softened ahead of time. This mm -hmm. is a European style high fat butter, uh, unsalted. Then we are using brown sugar. So unlike a lot of cookie recipes that incorporate either a combination of white or brown sugar or just white sugar, this cookie is all brown sugar. And that really complements the flavor of the whole wheat. And it's, I think it makes a big difference. Um, then um, two eggs. So these are just, uh, you know, um, pasture eggs, pasture raised eggs. And then we have salt and we have baking uh, so, uh, soda in here. So at the next thing we're going to do, because these are going to be our add-ins at the end, we'll talk about those in a second. Can I ask you about the butter yeah, for a second? Yeah, sure. So for people who might not be familiar with European-style mm -hmm. butter, Plugra would be one brand. Definitely. Can... Plugra, um, there's an Irish butter, that, um, that the Irish gold oh, butter. Oh, Kerrygold. Kerrygold, yeah. Kerrygold that's, butter. that's delicious. Um, that's a great one. There's a couple different Danish butters um, that sometimes Whole Foods has. Uh, those are all high-fat um, High fat content butters, which just means it has a lower water content, and so it's just gonna, you know, give a deeper, richer flavor to to the product that whatever you're making, whether it's a bread or a cookie. Yeah. And you can substitute it in direct proportion. You know, absolutely. You, if yeah, a absolutely. recipe calls for butter, you could use absolutely. This oh, absolutely. Yeah. For there's no there's no difference. It's just gonna give you a richer flavor. So you're e you can easily just use any butter that you have in your fridge, and you'll be have a great product. Um, but if you do find a European style butter, you can just substitute that in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, you're going to be adding our um, butter and our brown sugar to our KitchenAid. The KitchenAid is attached with the paddle attachment. That's the only attachment we're going to need. Um, and just briefly, I want to talk about how long we mix this for because a lot of times with cookie recipes, they tell you to. Um, or at cakes, they have you beat the butter and the sugar until they're fluffy. And with this, it's really just until incorporated. So that's okay. super important. Um, it will affect the final shape of the cookie. So if we mix the over mix the butter, that's kind of the one delicate part of this whole recipe is just really quickly mixing the butter and the sugar. Um, yeah. Interesting. So what what happens if it gets all fluffy? What happens is at, when you make the cookie, you won't. It'll look maybe a little paler in color, like the actual uh, cookie dough. But when you go to bake the cookie, it will spread out a lot. And these are because of a whole wheat, and because there's you know, a lot in this cookie. I mean, there's equal parts basically flour to the add-in. So there's 
um, over two cups of walnuts and chocolate in this, and there's two cups of flour. <laughs> so yeah, so there's it's very delicately bound together. And if you incorporate too much air when you are creaming the butter and the sugar, um, it's the when you bake the cookie, it spreads out. And you, we want this to be a really soft and chewy cookie. That's the, the joy of this cookie is, mm -hmm. is just that perfect chewy cookie you imagine but you don't want like a pancake and it, that's what will happen if you overbeat the butter and the sugar. So it, it's easy. All you do is just put it in there, mix it up until it's just barely combined and, and that's it. So that's it's it. not stressful, but you just want to just maybe pay attention to that moment. Um, our butter mm -hmm. is just a little bit uh, colder than I might want. And so what I'm going to do is before I add my sugar in there, I'm going to just give it a second um, on with the mm -hmm. mixer to just soften the butter a little bit more. So, and then. And I'm just softening it, so mm -hmm. that, that's probably good. And then I'm gonna add all of my sugar at once. So again, just a, a and this is a uh, light brown sugar. You know, I have to ask you about yeah. that because to me that looks like dark brown it sugar. It does, yeah, but it, just because we're using a more organic product, so it oh. comes out, like we typically use organic sugars, um, and organic white sugar and brown sugar are a darker color than your, your non-organic. Um, yeah. Right. But yeah, a dark brown sugar um, that we buy at least commercially would be really dark like like it looks as if it has molasses in it and this too is still a lighter brown sugar yeah okay so so we really for this you want to seek out organic light we, brown sugar we well when we talk about our ingredients we try to use as much organic as possible so mm -hmm. um i definitely recommend seeking out organic flours sugars um butter uh, or the very highest quality you can find. So like the chocolate we're gonna be using today, it's Valrona. It's oh. not organic, um, and that's something, that, but we find that it's the very best chocolate we can buy. We're, we believe in the company, we believe in the choices they make, so it isn't 100% organic, but they are still sourcing like responsibly, and mm -hmm. um, it feel, it's still a great product. It's, it's the best product we, we, for this purpose. Does that make sense? Yeah, but otherwise, yeah, I definitely recommend finding uh, organic as much as possible. Yeah. Okay. And Oh, looks like we have a question. Can you use any type of walnut? You can, definitely. Um, you can use, um, we use a whole walnut, um, but you can use walnut pieces, and you don't have to use a walnut. We also toast them ahead of time. So um, anytime I use a nut in baking, I like to toast it. Uh, it brings out a lot more of the flavor. Um, so even like in our um, almond croissants with our frangipan, we toast our almond flour before we make the frangipan. So it just deepens the flavor. But yeah, you could use any kind of walnut, yeah. Good question. Who was that who asked the question? That was Carol Ann Fitzsendry. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, Carol Ann. Awesome. Appreciate it. So now we're going to um, incorporate the sugar and the butter. Um, so we're doing this on a low speed. I have my KitchenAid set to stir right now. I'm going to bring it up to speed two. And I'm just going to let it go about a minute or so. I'm going to grab a spatula while we're mixing that. Sure. They're, yeah, right Perfect. there. Wow, you know, this sugar smells better. Mm -hmm. it, it really has yeah. a lovely kind of sweet, almost uh, caramelly. In our kunamon, I brought some with us as well. In the kunamon that we make, this is um, basically a, a croissant style dough and we use organic sugar in this. And it's like this golden, you can even still see even before, I mean, this is baked obviously, but it's a golden color. And that's just because of the organic sugar. And it just adds, it has a lot more depth of flavor. It does, yeah. that's, that's something I've noticed having eaten far too many of your pastries, <laughs> is that they in general do have a much nuttier, deeper, more flavorful Yeah, well, I mean, you're working with really quality. simple ingredients, you know, bread is, you know, flour, water, salt, and yeast. And since we, our bakery really focuses on like breads and laminated doughs, it's really important that those handful of ingredients we use are the very best quality and that each one serves a purpose to like bring a layer of flavor, right? So here, if you look, we have um, the butter and the sugar and they're not quite completely incorporated. So I'm gonna, I just scrape down the sides of my bowl and we're nowhere near over mixing. So not to like scare anyone away from this recipe. We're right now, we're just, we're like, oh, okay, I still see big chunks of butter. I still see, you know, it's not this one homogenous thing. So we're gonna turn our mixer back on. Okay. And I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm gonna pop it up to speed four for a second just to bring it together. 
Oh. And then that looks good. So it's just kind of creamed together. It's not fluffy. It's not, you know, it's just, it's just barely together. And that's perfect. That's what we want. Okay. And now we're going to add our eggs. And whenever, go ahead, did you want? No, no, okay. please. I was just going to say, whenever I am um, cracking eggs into anything I'm mixing, I like to crack them away from the mixer because when you, you have the, op the possibility of getting a little eggshell, if, but if you use another bowl, then you won't be worried about getting that eggshell in there. So we'll drop these in. And I'm just going to drop both eggs in together. I'm not going to wait um, and then add another one since it's such a small batch. All right. And then I'm going to turn it back on to a low speed. Go up to speed two again. Mm -hmm. And after it starts to incorporate a little bit, this is when I'm going to add my dry ingredients and my vanilla. Oh, can you say a few words about the vanilla? Yeah. So we actually typically use a vanilla paste um, at the bakery. Mm -hmm. uh, that's something that I think sometimes you can find, but it is probably a little bit more of a specialty item. I, you I haven't seen it at the grocery store very much. I, I think I did buy it at Whole Foods. Okay, great, yeah. I, d I d have found it in the market. Yeah, and, and you, well, you use it in a one-to-one -one ratio. So if, you're, if a recipe calls for uh, uh, vanilla extract, you can use a, like, whatever the equal part is in the um, vanilla paste. But what happens here is it's actually, you can see the little vanilla beans in it still um, instead of, like, with the vanilla extract with just going to be pure liquid. Yeah. Um, so yeah. what is the vanilla paste? Is it vanilla extract with vanilla beans? In exactly. It? Yeah. Oh. It's basically, and it's it's like a, it's got kind of a a thicker texture. You know, it's not quite yeah. a total liquid. Yeah. So. Oh, and it too smells good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the yeah. Joy we of typically baking. use that in all of our recipes rather than the um, rather than the extract. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna get all of this in here. Excuse yes. me. Sorry. <laughs> Just the other day, I was with the chef who called his finger, you know, his most important <laughs> scraping tool. Yeah. It's true. The one thing I always say to new people at the bakery is like, you know, you want to work cleanly, absolutely, but don't be afraid to get your hands in the dough. Like, that's going to have to happen, you know. Um, <laughs> all right. So we've got our vanilla extract in there. Um, I'm just going to incorporate my salt. And it is, I want to make sure, it is baking soda. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, into my dry ingredients. Uh, and then we're going to start to incorporate our flour. I'm going to open this up again before I add that in. Um, and then, so this is whole wheat, well, this is wheat flour. This mm -hmm. is no longer whole wheat flour in the sense that we have sifted it. Uh, we, the mill that we have at our bakery has a sifter attached. All right, and this is the brand that you've sifted Exactly, out, right? so this was the um, berry to begin with. So this is what we start with. We just purchased berries at the bakery, so we get rye berries in. This is a red wheat berry, it's called Yakora Rojo. Um, we also use a white wheat called uh, Blanco Grande that's from Coke Farms, which is uh, down kind of in um, San Juan Batista. And so we put the whole berry into the mill and you could get out either a flour that's a combination still of these two things, or you can turn on the sifter, which is another like motor within the machine. Mm -hmm. And it sifts out various, um, like various sizes of flour. And so we only just take out the bran and then everything else we still keep together. So like there are, there's the bran, there's the germ, and then there's the endosperm. And those are the three parts of each uh, berry. And so we have the endosperm and we have the germ still there. We just take the bran out. Just yeah. the outer part. Yes, exactly. Got it. So now we're gonna add our flour and I'm gonna add about half of it and start it on low speed again. And once it's slightly incorporated, then we'll add the rest. You know, these the colors of everything you're using, they're sort of like decorator colors. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're very they're restful. So, they're yeah. so peaceful. They are. Well, the copper, really, it's a perfect, kind of is. perfect foil to them all, yeah. We did not plan this. <laughs> no, but it's beautiful. But it looks awfully Earth nice. Mm -hmm. So it looks really nice. Um, I'm going to stop the mixer, and I'm going to um, scrape down the sides, and I'm going to add the rest. So... Yeah, perfect. Thank you. We'll turn it on for one more second and then we'll scrape down. Mm. And this is the same, like, where with the butter and the sugar, we only just basically wanted to bring it together. Same thing here. So it, okay. it's, it's 
technique wise, it's kind of like the less the better, which is nice for a recipe because a lot of recipes are so precise about, you know, fluff until they're, I don't know, like whisk until it has this kind of peak or whatever. And with this recipe, it really is just like mix until combined. It's almost like yeah. this might be a good one to do with a wooden spoon and a you, bowl. It really, you could, you could. Yeah, because no. none of the paddle is just acting as a, as a means to incorporate ingredients. It's not mm -hmm. giving it volume or anything like that. Yeah, you definitely could. It's like grandma style. Definitely. <laughs> and then we're just gonna scrape down everything and make sure that there isn't any dry flour. You know, that always happens. There's always a little bit on the bottom. Yeah, I find that to be true with KitchenAids. And then um, in commercial bakeries, we use a like larger version of a KitchenAid that's called, uh, usually called a Hobart. Right. And I typically, like, they always have this kind of conical bowl, slightly conical. And I like to actually put my wet ingredients in if it's a recipe that allows you to do that. Um, like a cornbread or something like that. I put my wet ingredients in the mixer first because it helps it not stick as much at the bottom. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so that looks yeah. pretty good. Mm. There's a little bit of dry stuff at the bottom, but this texture that we're seeing that's like pretty kind of thick and yeah. kind of almost just looks still like it's just the brown sugar and the butter, that's perfect. That's what we're looking for. I cannot tell you how hard it is for me <laughs> not to reach in there. Okay, can I? Can, can I just do yeah. it? Oh, God. <laughs> good? Mm. Mm -hmm. Good. It's really good. <laughs> yeah, this is one of those doughs that you can't mm. help but kind of like take a little yeah. bite whenever you're making. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's so much flavor in there already. It's yeah. just really caramelly and mm. Yeah, and it's it's a great base. I brought along some other options for add-ins um, because I think that this is a great cookie to kind of seasonally change up if you want to, uh, if you use just this yeah. base recipe. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so that is, that's it in terms of how much mixing we want to do for the actual dough itself. And now it's just mm. time to add in um, our two uh, our two add-ins that we use. So at the bakery, our add-ins are a Valrhona chocolate, which is 62%, and then toasted walnuts. When you say 62%, mm -hmm. what does that mean? That means that the amount of, um, I'm not the best chocolate person, but the amount of sugar that's in there is either going to be lower or higher because of the cocoa. So the, how, what they've taken out or left in. So, you know, if you have like a 70% or an 80%, you're going to start to get these like um, bit more, not bitter, but the, the stronger, stronger tones. This is going to be slightly more on the sweet side. Okay, yeah, so that's so like, kind of like a semi-sweet chocolate. Semi-sweet. So the, the sixty-two percent would mean sixty-two percent like cacao. Exactly. Yeah. It versus like seventy-two percent cacao or eighty right. or yeah. Or hundred percent. Or hundred percent. Which is which bitter, is, bitter, bitter. Yeah. Which yeah. So mm. um, so we choose sixty. This this chocolate sixty-two percent um, because it has a little bit of sweetness, but it's definitely not a milk like a, a milk chocolate style chocolate. Yeah. And I would recommend a semi like a semi-sweet chocolate. Um, okay. I would also recommend for this recipe buying a chocolate bar, not buying chocolate chunks or chips. I would buy a bar and I would chop it up. I think it, mm. you're going to get, you're going to be, have better access to better chocolates that way than if you're just going to be buying like the chocolate bits. Yeah. Yeah. Because chocolate chips often have um, additives. They don't do. They, they, they do. don't melt as much. Exactly. And, and this, and that's, we don't bake this cookie for very long. So, and part of what makes it so great is that everything is pretty gooey. And so, I, I think you want that deep flavor. You want a chocolate that's not too super sweet, and you okay. want it to have. I mean, just you just want regular chocolate, you know, not a, mm -hmm. not a kiss, not a Hershey kiss or something like that. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So now we're just gonna add these, um, and you can add one and then the other, or you can add it all at once. The, but the important thing is just making sure that it mixes all the way because you'll notice that everything's left in really big chunks. Um, yeah. So it does have a tendency to want to like kind of clump together. So you just want to make sure that you're scraping down the bowl so that you have an evenly dispersed amount of, of your add-ins basically. Okay. And I see that your chocolate is in all different sizes. Yeah, we just chop so it up. Yeah, so it's fine. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And it's kind of nice because then you get some big bits and some small bits and mm -hmm. yeah. But you can see like, it basically now just looks like it's like all chocolate. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. It does. And then I'm gonna add the walnuts in. Great. Mm. And then this is definitely a time where we're gonna wanna um, scrape down the paddle. Okay, yeah. So. The we'll poor paddle, it's very burdened. <laughs> it is. So we'll just take it and then. Oh man. Yeah, because we wanna make, see, we wanna make oh. sure that it's all even, you don't want to 
you don't want a piece of cookie that has very little chocolate in it. So you want it to really all have equal amounts. Oh my gosh, can I? Can yeah, I? yeah, this is the time to really try a piece. <laughs> this is, yeah. I just I'll try can't one too. Help it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. mm, that nuttiness, right? Mm. From the from the flour itself, you know? Mm -hmm. You should team up with an ice cream maker mm -hmm. and make a cookie dough flavor. That would be a lot of fun. That would be a good one. Mm. Okay, so we're almost there. Um, we're just gonna, now that we scraped it down, we're gonna run it one more time just to make sure everything's really evenly mixed. And then we'll be done. Um, I don't wanna over mix it still because um, because I left everything big and chunky, the longer I mix it, the more it's gonna break those things apart. And I don't wanna break down my walnuts. I don't wanna break down my chocolate more. I want them in those big pieces. So, sure. so that's it. Oh, I have one other thing yeah. to ask you about nuts. Okay. How do you get fresh nuts? What's the best way? You know how when you buy, go to the store, you I buy a big bag of nuts I and one's rancid? go and to the farmer's market. Okay. There are a lot of, I mean, we live in California and, mm. uh, in Santa Cruz, we're able to get nuts that are grown locally. I like mm -hmm. I go to the Santa Cruz market every Wednesday, and there's somebody we source some of our dried fruits and nuts from people that are at that market. So I would check in at the markets because you can okay. really find great nuts. Yeah. yeah, nothing is sadder than you know it's like 10 o'clock at night and you're desperate for a chocolate chip cookie, <laughs> and then you find out that you know you've got a bad nut, and yeah. you're wondering about all the other ones that are in there. <laughs> no, I would just it's... I would think the nut just like any other ingredient, if you can buy it locally, I would say mm -hmm. go with that. Way and you'll have better, and that way, if you do find, have a not great product, you know who you can go talk to about it too. You know, you can say, Hey, I bought this, and I wasn't really that happy with. And usually, yeah. people, you know, the farmers take a lot of pride in their work, so they're gonna mm -hmm. be responsive. Yeah. yeah, okay, so that is the cookie dough. Okay. So, we are going to get rid of this guy, all right, and then let's see, do you have kids? I don't, I don't. Oh my gosh, there is gonna be a kid who wants to lick that I know, powder. right? Oh. All right. I'm just gonna wash my hands for one quick second. Mm -hmm. And I will try not to lick this. <laughs> All right. So, now we are going to scoop the cookies. Okay. Getting close to finished cookie time. Yeah. All right. So, um, the thing about these cookies is that we do actually want to bake them. I like to bake them from frozen. Um, oh. Yeah, so because this is such a, there's not a lot binding the cookie together, there's mm -hmm. more chocolate and nuts in there than there is flour, uh, it wants to spread out. So just like mm -hmm. the, the, the importance of how we mix it, being really gentle with the mixing, Chilling the at least for the at the very minimum you need to chill the cookie. Um, okay. You definitely per, for the best product you don't want to scoop it and bake it right away. Because um, then it'll yeah it just okay. yeah you want to chill that butter back down basically because that's what the egg and the butter are going to be the binders for this whole thing now. Mm -hmm. So you want to chill it down so you can either scoop them and put them in the fridge or scoop them put them in the freezer um, mm -hmm. and then you want to chill it down for a minimum of probably like an hour and a half to two hours yeah okay if you're chilling if you're chilling okay. yeah what yeah. if you're freezing if you're freezing i mean they need to they we would want to get them frozen so that's going to oh. take you know we I, I i keep this in the freezer because they bake perfectly from frozen and they bake for a very small amount of time so it's it's an easy cookie to just make have you know Scoop, freeze, and then pull out whenever you want to have a fresh baked cookie because it takes ten minutes to bake. So I'm, making, I'm going to make these tonight. Yeah. and always have them in my exactly. Freezer. It's really easy. Um, so now we're just going to scoop the cookie. So um, again, there's two different ways you could do this. I, I, I was at home making these. I probably would scoop them, a lot of them, onto either a plate or a sheet tray, um, you know, and line them up and put this whole thing into the fridge. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't kind of like, I would go ahead and process all of my cookies if that makes sense, because it's a lot easier mm -hmm. to scoop this cookie while it's still soft. Because uh, it, even if you don't plan on baking them all right away, it's a good idea to go ahead and scoop them all. Yeah. Because there's so much butter, it'll sort of- Exactly, so it's, easy, it's just, it's gonna get solid, and mm -hmm. then it's gonna be really hard to scoop nicely. Um, okay. So, so it's gonna be, and you can make these any size you want, but I mean, considering the fact that we have these really big pieces of walnuts mm -hmm. and we have all this chocolate in there, I like to have a little bit on the bigger side. I don't want to, I wouldn't make this cookie a super tiny cookie, like, because 
if I was going to do that, I would want to chop the walnuts up a little bit more because and otherwise you'll end up with basically like one walnut and like a little bit of cookie. You want right. you want all of it, right? So, so this, this a heaping could, yeah, spoonful. Yeah, you're a heaping uh, scoop. Yeah, it's a bit of a commitment. A, a happy commitment. To In eat, terms of eating the cookie, eating yeah. The cookie. <laughs> you could split one with someone, but yeah. Uh -huh. I think once you try it, it's hard to stop eating. I think most people eat the whole cookie. <laughs> yeah. They're going to want it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So just like that. Great. Yeah. Do you have to dip this thing in water? No, not at all. No. The, it's so soft uh -huh. that it, and the, this is a great scoop. It works really well. So. Okay. And you can just kind of make a heaping spoon. You don't have to round it out too much or anything like that, but just like that, yeah. Because it'll all even out in the oven. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't need to. It's not an exact science for sure. Um, I think just trying to aim for them being relatively the same size because um, mm -hmm. when you bake them, they're gonna bake. You know, if you have three different size cookies, they're gonna bake differently. Um, but that's about it. Sure. But don't, you don't have to worry too much about that, I think. And will they bake, are, are you a, a believer in the rotating of the pans? I sure? am a believer in the rotating of the pans. At the, um, in our bakery, we have a rotating rack oven that does that mm -hmm. for us. Um, but, uh, but it is important, no oven is perfectly even. So rotating things, it's just, it, if you're gonna go the, to the effort of, you know, buying the great ingredients and making this mm -hmm. great product, like take a second to just turn the pan, you know, and you'll end up with a more even product because mm -hmm. the oven, no matter what, has hot spots, I think. Right, yeah. so just turn it 180. Yeah, just turn it 180 halfway through baking. Okay. And I like to wait, you don't wanna like do it right away. So if it's a 10 minute bake time, five minutes in, rotate it, yeah. Okay. Um, that way they have a chance to kind of be pretty set before you open the door. Yeah. Do you think it's necessary to switch the positions of the pans too? Do I think it depends well, on or? your oven. I think, okay. I think you know, we all have very different ovens. So mm -hmm. um, I, I would say if you know your oven well, a lot of times that bottom tray can be the actually can be the one that bakes a little more quickly. Um, mm -hmm. So I, if you think that you're seeing a difference, like yeah, then I would I would switch them up. Yeah. 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 Well, as as you're scooping, I yeah. wanted to ask you. Um, I've read a little bit about you, okay, because I am such a fan. <laughs> and it sounds like you grew up in a baking household. Something about poppy seed prune bread. Yeah, and, definitely. So, what is your culinary background? And did you yeah. did you grow up baking? Um, baking? I grew up baking with my parents and cooking mm -hmm. with my parents. Um, I didn't. My parents really appreciated food, and we always ate wonderful food and one of the things we always did as a family was cook but it wasn't something that I was at all thinking I appreciated food but I wasn't setting myself off on a path of like a food career um, when I was a kid uh, but I went to live in Spain when I was very young I when I was 15 I went to be a, like a study abroad student and that's where I really yeah. fell in love with food um, you know eating this like amazing food kind of in the Basque region yeah. and I was lucky enough to live with a family that really loved food as well, and they really took the time to like, kind of um, show me all of the amazing stuff that was around. Um, and so I came back with with this like great appreciation for um, for food, mm -hmm. and and then just kind of followed it. So um, I went to college and. Then I actually had an opportunity to go to France in college, and mm -hmm. that was more food. And so I thought, oh, I want to write about food. And mm -hmm. if I'm going to write about food, I should get a job in a kitchen and see what that's like, you know? And so that I'm not just writing about something I've never experienced. But then I got in the kitchen and I fell in love <laughs> with was, the kitchen. That was, that, was, that was it. I was I was I was totally addicted to the kitchen. And so I just kind of again, mm -hmm. it was it's been a very organic progression. Um, I moved out to California six years ago. My anniversary was two days ago uh, oh. for my six year anniversary. Yeah. Yeah, Facebook reminded me. Um, <laughs> and um, I moved out here to work with uh, or work for David Kinch. Um, I had met him in New York and was really impressed with. He's the chef at Memory Yeah, he's and the owner. Yeah, he is the Three star. one of the co-owners of the bakery as uh, now, obviously as well. So yeah, yeah. Manresa, For those of you who haven't been there, is a three-star Michelin restaurant and is really amazing. Yeah, and, it's and a, you you basically launched the bread program there. I, I or, did, or brought it to its current state. I did. I so they were making bread, and um, I really wanted to work at Manresa. So I was working actually. I took a job as a food runner. Um, I wasn't even in the kitchen, and so mm -hmm. food runners work at night, and I was free in the morning. And so I said, hey, I can come in and help out with 
the bread, help out with that, whatever. And I started helping out with the bread, and it went really well. So when I moved into the kitchen after six months, um, then I kind of took over the bread program. And then we had a guest who said, hey, there's a space at the farmer's market. You guys should try out and see if you can get in. And ah. so I baked all night and made as much bread as I could. And I took it, and they tasted it, and they liked it. And we got into the market, and then um, I started baking as much bread as I possibly could every mm -hmm. weekend. It was pretty wild, but it was really one. I mean, it was a really special time. Um, yeah. yeah, it was really great. Just and, the lines at the farmers yeah, market it, for her bread. It, it, yeah. yeah, it was really, really, it was really amazing and fun. And da you know, mm -hmm. David and uh, the chef de cuisine, everybody was so supportive and like helped run the booth with me and did all those that kinds of things. So, and then we, and then we mm -hmm. opened our own business. So yeah, it's been, and that it's been about two years. It's been two and a half. Yeah, okay. yeah, it'll be three years in February. So, wow. yeah, it's it's time flies. <laughs> okay, so we are going to put these in the oven. It, one, right? quick, oh. well, I was going to say oh, no. the only thing is these I would put in the fridge. So, like oh, right. in, in the yes. sense of how no. close they are together, um, this is close together so that we can fit them into our fridge and not take up too much room. <laughs> if I were to bake these, they'd be one solid exactly. sheet. Exactly, you have a brownie right. and it would be delicious. But, but. when we bake them. Uh -huh. I would spray, I would space these out. These are a little bit bigger, but um, I would space them out. So if you're using this, we call this like a half sheet pan. I would limit it to five, maybe six cookies, because um, they are going to be big cookies. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So are these? And that already? is going to be going okay. into the oven. All right. Here yep. we go. And then. And then, so we're going to be putting those into the oven at 350 degrees. And if your oven has a convection fan, um, you, you sh I would recommend using that. And then uh, 10 minutes, just yeah. 10 minutes. So it's a very quick bake. They're going to look really soft. That's how they're supposed to look. Okay. So, Should yeah. we do the magic of TV? Thing? Yeah, let's do the magic of right. TV. It's the, it's la, the best part of TV. La, la, la. <laughs> look, the magic oven on my hands aren't even hot. <laughs> But you know, this is ten minutes have gone by. Ten minutes have gone by. Look at these gorgeous cookies. And don't be. I mean, this is where your personal taste preference really comes in. I we set out to make a soft cookie. You mm -hmm. know, that was gonna stay soft all day. Um, and that's why it only bakes for ten minutes. So it's fully baked. Everything is baked. Mm -hmm. But you have so much. Um, chocolate in there and then you have this you know and it's all brown sugar that it stays really soft so if you prefer a crispier cookie you could bake them longer okay but then some, some people do but um but for us we really wanted a soft cookie and so right. you know these are really nice and soft and gooey still yeah oh my god all right i i, I i'm just gonna have to eat one yeah. almost immediately but before i do i want to ask you one more question about the fresh yeah, milled definitely. flour because it's so interesting so you at the at the bakery, you are grinding all your own greens fresh. We are. And what is the benefit of grinding them? And you're also using a stone grinder. Yes. And what's the difference between that and what you get in the store that says 100% whole wheat? Okay. Yeah. So I mean, the first difference between those two things is going to be how the freshness. Right. So it is totally possible that what is labeled whole wheat at the grocery store is is all of those parts of the wheat that we talked about a little while ago. Um, so, you know, you have your endosperm, which is the white part of the wheat. That's what makes white flour. The starchy part. Yes. Then you have the, the bran and the germ. And the bran and the germ are really where all of the nutrients are because the wheat berry is, it's a seed, you know, it's a berry. It's meant to grow more grain. So there's, the germ is where you get all of this good stuff for you, you know. And so we take that away. We still have something that's nice and yummy, but it's but it doesn't have as much flavor. It doesn't have as much nutrients for us. Um, right. And so, the first difference is freshness. The second difference is um, depending on where that grain was being made. Um, like, a lot of places, what they do is they mill and they separate everything, and then they recombine it. So oh. it's not like I've taken this one berry or whatever, like a couple berries, and I put them through a mill and I've gotten out my ingredient, my my flour. It is all together still. It's more like I've stripped everything and sent them all in different directions, and now some scientist is saying this is like, this is the proper ratio for my whole wheat. It doesn't mean that this berry A all ended up together for you. It's like a little bit of this berry and a little bit of that berry. Does that make sense? It yeah. does, and I, I've heard that when you do that, yeah. smithereen the, the, the berries yeah. like that, and then recombine them, you lose a lot of you, enzymes. You do. You, you lose these things that are barely understood. Really. Yeah, yeah, exactly, and it's, Having access to whole grains is actually really 
easy. Um, there's a lot of easy home, like home mills. Um, mm -hmm. There are, if you have a Vitamix, there's an attachment for the Vitamix that will um, mm. will mill grain. It's mm -hmm. some people prefer. They're definitely like a stone mill kind of cult advocates who believe that like a stone mill is the only way to go. But I, I personally think that anytime you're milling something fresh at your mm -hmm. house, it's going to be higher quality and more flavor than what you're going to be able to buy yeah, at the grocery store. It's, it's yeah. a little hard to bring in a stone mill. They weigh, what, approximately two tons? Well, <laughs> actually, there, there are some really amazing home mills that are actually stone mills. So there's the Como, really? yeah, the Como mill um, is a really incredible mill. Um, it's a tabletop mill mm -hmm. and it is, um, was invented by a German man um, and he, and then his business partner, he wanted to make stone mill uh, flowers at home mm -hmm. and this was in the, 60s and he mm -hmm. um started he was started to kind of tinker and make these mills they was trying to figure out how he could make a mill that could be in the house right mm -hmm. and he created this thing called the coma mill and uh it's really wonderful they're a little expensive but they're actually coming out with um a line very very soon i think end of this year beginning of next year um that are going to be a lot less expensive um and it's a tabletop mill and it's a stone mm -hmm. mill um, it's made with, uh, they call it liquid wood, so it's not plastic. It's actually, oh. it's, it looks like plastic. It feels like plastic, but mm -hmm. it's actually like wood that's been compressed. Um, so mm. all of those things are really important to this, this, this guy. You know, he didn't want to use plastic. He wants to use wood. He wants to use stone. He wants it to be very natural. Yeah. yeah. And so, and so those are definitely worth yeah. looking up the Como mill. Como, yeah. K-O-M-O. C. Uh, C. C. Yeah. I think okay. it's C-O, Como. I think it's C-O-M-O. -O. Yeah. Okay. Como mill. Yeah. All right, Avery. Yeah. It's cookie time. Is it time, time to eat a cookie? So you know what we have to have with it? I think I do. Yes. <laughs> we have to have milk. A glass for you. Thank you. A glass for me. Some napkins. <laughs> These cookies are definitely a little bit oh, messy, man. so I would recommend napkins for yeah. sure. <laughs> Thank you. you. Go. Oh, I, I can just hardly wait. Oh, boy, oh, boy. And you're, you're nice, you brought so much extra. <laughs> well, we all like cookies. Well, you know, we may need some more milk here. <laughs> I'll give you a little more. Perfect. Okay, because I may have to have two. Oh, there you go. Well, I don't know. I mean, they're, they're pretty <laughs> delicious. Well, thank you. Oh, you're so yeah. welcome. Yeah, well, well, cheers. Cheers. All right. Oh. Oh. You can go right in. Wow, yeah. <laughs> It's really mm. good. <laughs> mm. Oh man, <laughs> it's so good. It is really good. I'm actually kind of verklempt. <laughs> oh, these are just so good. They really, really are so good. And that's a special thing. We're, we're They're really... like they have this kind of crystalline texture. Mm -hmm. and that's just from the that's on again, the outside. It's again from the flour. You know, just from like it being this fresh milled flour. Mm hmm. Oh my god. <laughs> It's a big this, cookie, though. This is a perfect cookie. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm so <laughs> glad. Is, I have goosebumps <laughs> right now. Well, now you know amazing. how to make it. <laughs> I do. I'm so thrilled. Now, this, I don't see how this could be better, but do you want to talk about the other things you could use Definitely. this cookie? Um, so if I'm adding something into this cookie, excuse me, um, if I'm adding something into this cookie, mm. I'm still taking into account that it's made with this whole wheat flour, right? So that nuttiness is what I'm trying to complement. So I think things that are like, um, I don't know, like to me, cocoa nibs, that's a great add in, you know, it's gonna mm -hmm. give it a little crunch. There's a little bit of kind of like bitterness. So like, it's gonna be just a really lovely addition to this. So I might put cocoa nibs in, I might put coconut in. Mm -hmm. And this is um, coconut flakes. So I, do, I would not put shredded coconut in. I would put this kind of flake coconut. And you can find this at the grocery store. Is that sweetened? No. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. um, dried fruit, like so dried cherries will be really good in Ooh. there. Would you put all that in in addition? I would probably, I, I, I might, I mean, it depends. Mm -hmm. um, we make a cookie that we call the seven treasures cookie. And it basically is this plus oats and cherries and coconut. It's like kind of all of these things that you might find in like a trail mix bar or something, and it's good it's God. really good. Yeah, it's really really good. <laughs> it was really, it was, a, it was like a weekend special, and then people liked it so much that we started selling it every day now. So, look, <laughs> look at the cookie. Look at that. You could be eating this in just what like. Tw yeah, I, I mean the mixing part like is like twenty minutes, after, but after yeah, just chilling. Chills, yeah. yeah. 
Oh yeah. My gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. But these, yeah, those would definitely be a couple of the things. You could also put like Heath bars in there. That would be really, really good if you're mm. a candy person. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you guys, if you have a cookie that you're just dying for Avery to make, <laughs> please ask her. Just write in in the comments field, and you'll get them. And you know, she may entertain your ideas. So it's true. Yeah, we're mm -hmm. always we are always changing our items seasonally. So yeah. fall is on its way. Yeah, very much oh. so. So we're 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 starting to think about Thanksgiving and Christmas, and it's amazing that it's it's here it's already. Here already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Avery, where can people find the store again, and where can Definitely. they where can they find you at farmers markets? Yes, because you've just expanded. We have so we have two uh, retail mm -hmm. shops that are also coffee shops. Um, they're in Los Gatos, uh, in downtown Los Gatos, and in downtown mm -hmm. Los Altos. And then we are a part of three different farmers markets: a Saturday market in Willow Glen, and then uh, two Sunday markets: one in Palo Alto and one in Campbell. So, and we bring the whole variety of products that we make to the market. So it's not a limited selection, it's a full selection of, of our products, including, we make a lot of, we make a couple of savory items um, that I didn't bring today, but we make quiche, which is really, mm -hmm. really wonderful. Um, that's something you can get at the farmer's markets as well, um, and then all of our different breads. Yeah. Oh my gosh, well, my <laughs> mouth is full, but yeah. thank you. You're welcome, thank you. Oh. It was so great to be here, yeah. It's the best cookie ever. Yeah, it's really delicious. I'm thank glad you, you like it. Yeah, my I pleasure. I love it. <laughs> I'm glad, I'm glad. Awesome. Thank, thank yeah. you so much. My pleasure, my pleasure. Yeah. There. Thank you guys for joining us. Get baking. <laughs> Thanks, guys.